Hey YouTube, it's editing me. <laughs> I am tucked away in the little corner of the bus that I know you have already seen, like the stained glass, the sconce, the gorgeous ceiling, uh, to not give away any more build spoilers because this build is pretty much complete and it is so bittersweet. But enough about that. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than my usual videos. I thought I would do a dedicated Chinese diesel heater install video uh, with Charlie because there are so many really helpful DIY diesel heater install videos out there, um, but none of them that I've seen done by a professional schoolie builder like Charlie. And when I was filming him, he would he had all these little pro tip nuggets that I knew just needed a place on the internet that I knew they could be helpful. Uh, this is a little bit of an unorthodox diesel heater install video. It's not a start to finish, but rather um, it'll really help you fill in the gaps that other videos are missing and it'll just really help you along on the process. So it's just my experience at the shop as Charlie is installing it and as he's explaining it to me. So I hope it's helpful for any of you installing your own diesel heaters. And for the rest of you who are just here for the story, I hope that it's still fun to see life at the shop um, and just watch it get installed. Oh, for any of you who don't know, Charlie has been professionally converting school buses for almost a decade now. Uh, he is just really good at what he does. He and his builds have been featured on Discovery Channel, HGTV, all that kind of stuff. It's not every day that you get a resource like him who's so knowledgeable about something to share. So without further ado, here's Charlie. Woohoo. All right, Charlie's about to tackle the diesel heater. Yeah. Woo! So if you haven't installed one of these... Pro tip. Here's a pro tip. And if you have, next time. This will be useful for you. <laughs> so these heaters, they mount inside, and then all this stuff has to go through the floor. So right. I'm going to be cutting a big hole with a hole saw. What's hard is you don't always know. There's a lot going on under the bus. There's like um, structural members that we don't want to hit if we can help it. Right. But it's really hard to understand where those members translate to inside of here. Mm. So one thing that we like to do, and this is something, this is a technique that Ben, my associate, ben. pioneered, which is using these extra long, very small drill bits to drill pilot holes that oh. will go all the way through what we're trying to go through. And then I can go under and peek and see if this came out somewhere good or if I need to shift. And because it's so small and we're moving to such a big opening, right. I've got, I can drill holes, you know, all throughout this before I'm in an area that I'm going to, that I'd have to like patch it or something. Right. And if you do have to patch it. Very smart. Yeah. And if you do have to patch it because it's so small, we can just go under and shoot a rivet into the hole. Oh, it's wow. Patched, so it's not a big deal. Easy. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with like my wish list, you know, like the perfect place to mount this, <laughs> okay. you know, heater would yeah. be, it's probably right about there. Not too close to that wall. Right. And not too close to the back there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mark it and we'll drill a hole and then we'll go underneath and see, see if we got lucky. Speaking of the pioneer. Pioneer? Yeah. You came up with this method with the long skinny drill bit. For a yeah, pilot I hole? the long drill bit. Yeah. <laughs> ben makes these at home. <laughs> what he does is he welds a bunch of drill bits together. Yeah. He's pretty good at it. I mean, that's like pretty straight, you know? It's pretty good. Yeah. These the first ones are crooked. So yeah, yeah. Hard to spin a crooked drill bit. <laughs> I got my hole marked. Right here. Right there. So. This is it exciting? Yeah, it is exciting. <laughs> It feels good. I didn't hit anything. <laughs> so let's go underneath. Okay. And take a look and see where that came out. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be cozy if you get under here too, Alyssa. All right. We took so, out the gray water. Yeah. Gray water tank lives right here. If you look up, this is our drill bit. I don't know if you can see. Oh that. yeah. And see right here is a big structural member. Aha. Uh -huh. So when I make that hole bigger. I think I might need to shift it just a little bit closer to that bulkhead. To that wall. So that we don't, with the big hole, it'll be close. Yeah, it is. I might grab a tape measure and see, because if I don't have to move it, don't. We can get closer to that and be fine. It just makes it harder to get those screws in. Right. But All right. What, what's going to happen here is since this is her um, gray water tank, 
we're going to have to route the exhaust through this gap and hopefully it can just sneak out right here. The nice thing is the intake will be protected by the gray tank. Yeah, that's so really nice. Hopefully it won't be sucking up lots of road debris. Very cool. And we like that. We love that. Do you want me to go grab you tape so you don't have to get out? Do you mind? Nope. How are you looking? Looking good. Four inch hole saw and we were two and a quarter inches away from our hole uh, to that cross member that we don't want to hit. So we'll have a quarter inch to spare. Perfect. So we'll do the big hole and um, we'll do the big hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bus conversion can be done. That's the coming to the whole saw. Charlie does not like the whole saw. We have them in every size and they're invaluable, but they just suck. It's a really violent and aggressive tool. And yeah. uh, I've, it's I've, time. I've heard then. myself whole sawing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. The big one. Yeah, because with these big ones, they'll be drilling and then they'll bind and it'll jerk your drill like in oh. your face. Ty about knocked himself out one time. <gasps> really? Drilling underneath next to his head and the battery swung into his no. head. No. I think he did knock himself out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, mean. warning. Yeah. Okay. But, Best of luck to the, each other. They're like kind of the only tool that does the thing that they do. Did so. The necessary so what job. Do, what know? are you gonna do? Well, I'll Gotta get the job do. done, you know? You're gonna do the fucking job. <laughs> This is what your floor looks like. That is cross thick. section. Wow. Two inches of insulation, plywood subfloor, and then your uh, bamboo. That's a lot. That's a thick that's floor. That's why we had to do a roof raise. That's why. Yeah, everyone's always like, why? That's why. And then other people are like, I'm not insulating the floor. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? Hi, welcome back to the Diesel Heater Installation 101. I'm your host, <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Here's a, another pro tip. So, um, it's really nice. So there's a mounting plate. Mm -hmm. The cheap ones, the expensive ones, they all have a mounting plate. Put the mounting plate on and then go ahead and do all of your connections to the bottom of this. Oh, now, sure. So that you're not having to spend as much, as much time underneath hooking everything up. Very smart. Very nice. Also an option on these Chinese diesel heaters. So this is the main wiring harness that connects to the unit. Okay. Um, and it plugs in here. I've seen installations where people have that harness, because you can route that harness underneath and have that connection underneath the vehicle. Um, I don't like that mostly because it exposes that connection to salt and water and all of that stuff. And we just replaced a heater in the shop last week we did. Yeah, and it was wired up such that this was hanging outside when it really didn't need to be. You mm -hmm. could have run it all indoors. So uh, on Alyssa, since the power's coming from inside, the only wires that I need to have come out and be exposed to the elements are just these two, which go to the fuel dosage pump. Right. And there's kind of no way around that. The fuel pump, if you're installing this and tapping into the existing fuel lines, the fuel pump will be underneath the vehicle. Right, because so we are tapping into the bus diesel tank. We're tapping into the bus diesel tank because having a tank full of diesel in your living space is really gross. Uh, this is real bummer. Diesel's bunny. messy. Mm -hmm. And you have to fill a separate tank. It's a separate tank to fill yep. and... You run out a lot quicker. You run out a lot quicker. Which <laughs> the beauty of this is like when Alyssa's diesel tank is full she'll have weeks of uh, diesel Mm -hmm. to run this here. Probably, maybe even more. Right. Well, on this one, because we can't drop your tank, or right. we don't want to drop your tank, right. we're actually tapping off the line that feeds the engine. Oh, So cool. you can. But then, <laughs> but all I do is... All you have to do is just check your fuel gauge. Turns out, I mean, I've got this really cool feature right here. Yeah. This one. This tells me how much fuel I have. <laughs> but that is... Uh, it is a concern if you're being careless. However, um, you know, on some buses, the fuel tank, there's a, a little hatch that you can access it from above. A lot of short buses don't have that, but almost mm -hmm. every full-size bus does have it. 
Right. And in that case, the preferred installation is to drill a hole in the top of the fuel tank, right. stick in a straw, and then you cut it about that far off the bottom so that not only does it not suck up the sediment and any of the crud in your filter or in your fuel, um, there's no way you can ever run yourself out of fuel. Right. Um, but, but it would take so long to yeah, run a 55-gallon tank down. I would need groceries and water probably before. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, either way. They're all better options than having those plastic tanks. And a lot of the tanks yeah. that come with these Chinese heaters, uh, they're not made out, they're just not made very well. And if you ever spill that in your living space, it's gonna smell like diesel for the rest of your life. Ugh. Yeah. So that we're just gonna smell. shove all this through and plop the heater down. Okay. And then I'll go below and uh, hopefully we'll have all the right fittings that we need to tee off the line. Cool. And we'll set a record for having one of these installed in about two hours. That's with you also doing propane stuff and yeah. helping Brandon. Doing other stuff. stuff while we're in here. <laughs> so yeah, so since we have everything all done like that, oh, yeah. you just oh, feed yeah. it through. That way you don't have to be staring up at it trying to... Yeah. I, under a bus. We spend enough time under the buses as it is. Oops. Oops. There we go. That's Look what I want to be. We'll run our wires around. Just like that. Oh, there we go. Nice. Alright, you're rolling. Yeah. Here we are. It's the next day. But we haven't been working on the diesel heater the whole time. No. We had to go get some fittings to make our T adapter so that we can T off of the fuel line. Yes. And that is, I want to show you how we did that because this is a common issue and a lot of people avoid tapping into the diesel tank because they're afraid of this part. Right. And, and they think they have to drop their whole tank. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that you don't. And <laughs> I want to show you how we did it and how you can tell, at least on this model bus, if you can do it this way. Cool. How to do it and the parts you'll need. And there might be some other professional bus converters out there who could... Uh, use this information to provide a better service to their clients. There so, you go. Alyssa, hand me that phone. All right, here you go, okay. Charlie. You're driving. Okay, I'll try not to make you uh, <laughs> viewers at home get sick, but that's the bottom of the uh, diesel heater. The shiny silver tube is our exhaust line, and that goes out. There's Alyssa. <laughs> the black line is the air intake. That's a little air filter that it's got. And then if you look there, you can see a clear fuel line and then a black wire. And we put that in split loom, which is for uh, chafe protection. And we run that over. Now on the Power Stroke Diesel, um, after 1999, <laughs> it's so gross under here because Alyssa had it coated you know what, with lanolin. Anyway, on the Power Stroke Diesel, um, after 1999, that's that canister right there, that's actually your fuel pump. So as long as we tap into the fuel line, which is the line going into that fuel pump, before the fuel pump, so on the non-pressurized side, you'll be able to tap into that and uh, it'll play nice with your diesel heater. So if you see this fitting here, this little T fitting that we made up, if this will focus, it'd be great if it focused, but it probably won't. There we go, that's a little T fitting. And then this line coming off here is our diesel heater tap off. And then that goes into a little filter. And then out of the filter, it goes into the diesel heater fuel pump. And it's critical that that is mounted at an angle pointing upward. It needs to be at least 15 degrees. And then from there, it goes in its split loom jacket up inside and hits that diesel heater. So the parts you'll need to do this, um, that soft fuel line that we cut, this braided line there that the light's on, that's 5 16 inside diameter. So if you get 5 16 inch barb fittings, put those into a T, and then off the uh, takeoff of the T, you want a 1 8 inch barbed fitting, and that should play nice with just about every brand of diesel heater out there. So a little pro tip uh, so that you don't have to carry gallons of diesel fuel inside your vehicle. Alyssa, yeah. here you go. Hello, YouTube. Well done. Yeah. I think that's very helpful. Thanks, Charlie. You're welcome.
All right, do we see the inside now? Yeah, now let's take a look at how we did it inside. Okay. That's it. Rio yeah. wants to learn. Rio's here to learn too. <laughs> All right, so these layers installed. Woohoo! It's very simple looking in here, but all of those connections are up in the bottom, and then we just have our duct out to the front of the unit. It does suck air from inside this cavity, so we'll have to do some experimenting. There's a chance Alyssa's going to need to add like another vent here for the air to go into this cavity. Oh. But we'll see. It's like a pretty big space, and the, these panels are not airtight, so we'll okay. see. Um, cool. But it's all wired up, and what we did is we actually... Uh, those diesel heaters come with a very short length of wire for connecting to the controller. So right. we actually lengthened that controller wire harness oh, yeah. so that we could install the harness here. And as you can see, oh, my control panels. it's plugged in right there. So another pro tip, it's only three wires. And if you leave that really close to the heater, it's going to be kind of an inaccurate reading because it's close oh, to the heat source. Oh, makes sense. So, Yeah. Okay, how do you want to wrap it up? <laughs> Any more pro tips for diesel heaters? Pro tips, they're a great way to heat your living space. Those uh, ventless heaters like Mr. Buddies and stuff, they're good for uh, emergencies, but uh, they create lots of condensation and these diesel oh, heaters yeah. are a nice dry heat. So I see other builders out there installing propane ventless heaters and um, that's just kind of screwing over their customer because they're going to get so much condensation that's going to drip down the windows into their walls. At best, water damage. At worst, and more likely, mold. mold. So uh, I'm looking at you, other professional builders who are installing propane heaters for their clients that are ventless. That's a real crappy thing to do. Okay. <laughs> Only temporary solution there. It's a temporary or emergency solution. Exactly. And if you live some anywhere where it's humid already, mm -hmm. God. 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 Oh the, my the God. Freaking nervous some people. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Charlie. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I will be going back to my normal story style videos in the next one. This build is pretty much complete. It is so bittersweet and I'm so excited to share the rest of this process with you. It has been so special, my time at the shop in wrapping up the build, um, and you guys are a part of that because you have been here through the whole process. So if you haven't already, click subscribe to watch the build be complete and to watch me and my dog Rio hit the road once again. So I hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you very soon.